How to Analyze People on Sight Through the Science of Human Analysis The Five Human Types by Elsie Lincoln Benedict and Ralph Payne Benedict Part 2 of Chapter 1 Fat People Love Leisure A chance to do as we please, especially to do as little hard work as possible, is a secret desire of almost everybody. But the fat man takes the prize for wanting it most. Not a strenuous worker. He is not constructed to work hard like some of the other types, as we shall see in subsequent chapters. His overweight is not only a handicap in that it slows down his movements, but it tends to slow down all his vital processes as well, and to overload his heart. This gives him a chronic feeling of heaviness and inertia. Everybody likes him. But nature must have intended fat people to manage the rest of us instead of taking a hand at the heavy work. She made them adverse to toil, and then made them so likable that they can usually get the rest of us to do their hardest work for them. The World Managed by Fat People when he is brainy, the fat man never stays in the lower ranks of subordinates. He may get a late start in an establishment, but he will soon make those over him like him so well they will promote him to a chief clerkship, a foremanship, or a managership. Once there, he will make those under him so fond of him that they will work long and hard for him. Fat Men to the Top in this way, the fat man of real brains goes straight to the top, while others look on and bewail the fact that they do most of the actual work. They fail to recognize that the world always pays the big salaries not for hard work, but for head work, and not so much for working yourself as for your ability to get others to work. The Popular Politician this capacity for managing, controlling, and winning others is what enables this type to succeed so well in politics. The fat man knows how to get votes. He mixes with everybody, jokes with everybody, remembers to ask how the children are, and pretty soon he's the head of his ward. Almost every big political boss is fat. Makes others work. One man is but one man, and, at best, can do little more than a good man-sized day of work. But a man who can induce a dozen other man-machines to speed up and turn out a full day's work apiece doesn't need to work his own hands. He serves his employer more valuable as an overseer, foreman, or supervisor. The Fat Salesman a fat drummer is such a common phrase that we would think our ears deceived us did anyone speak of a thin one. Approach five people and say, A traveling salesman? Each will tell you that the picture this conjures in his imagination is of a fat, round, roly-poly, good-natured, pretty clever man whom everybody likes. For the fat men are born salesmen, and they make up a large percentage of that profession. Salesmanship requires mentality plus a pleasing personality. The fat man qualifies easily in the matter of personality. Then, he makes little or much money from salesmanship according to his mental capacity. The Drummer's Funny Stories You will note that the conversation of fat people is well sprinkled with funny stories. They enjoy a good joke better than any other type, for reason which will become more and more apparent to you. That salesmen are popularly supposed to regale each customer with yarns till he gasps for breath, and to get his signature on the dotted line while he is in that weakened condition, is more or less of a myth. It originated from the fact that most salesmen are fat, and that fat people tell stories well. Jokes at Fat Men's Expense Look at Fatty. 
get a truck. And other jibes greet the fat man on every hand. He knows he cannot proceed a block without being the butt of several jokes, but he listens to them all with amiability surprising to the other types. And this good nature is so apparent that even those who make sport of him are thinking to themselves, I believe I'd like that man. The Fat Man's Habits Never hurry, never worry, are the unconscious standards underlying many of the reactions of this type. If you will compile a list of the habits of any fat person, you will find that they are mostly the outgrowths of one or both of these motives. Won't speed up. You would have a hard time getting an alimentive to follow out of any protracted line of action calling for strenuosity, speed, or high tension. He will get as much done as the strenuous man when their mentalities are equal, and often more. The fat person keeps going in a straight line, with uniform and uninterrupted effort, and does not have the blowouts common to more fidgety people. But hard, fast labor is not in his line. Love's Comedy All forms of mental depression are foreign to fat people as long as they are in normal health. We have known a fat husband and wife to be ejected for rent and spend the evening at the movies laughing like four-year-olds at Charlie Chaplin or a Max Sinnott comedy. You have sometimes seen fat people whose financial condition was pretty serious and wondered how they could be so cheerful. Inclined to indolence. Fat people's habits, being built around their points of strength and weakness, are necessarily of two kinds, the desirable and the undesirable. The worst habits of this type are those inevitable to the ease-loving and the immature-minded. Indolence is one of his most undesirable traits and costs the alimentive dear. In this country where energy, push, and lightning-like efficiency are at a premium, only the fat man of brains can hope to keep up. The inertia caused by his digestive processes is so great that it is almost insurmountable. The heavy, lazy feeling you have after a large meal is with the fat man intermittently because his organism is constantly in the process of digesting large amounts of food. Likes Warm Rooms Love of comfort, especially such things as warm rooms and soft beds, is so deeply embedded in the fiber of this type that he has ever to face a fight with himself which the rest of us do not encounter. This sometimes leads the excessively corpulent person to lax into laziness and slovenliness. An obese individual sometimes surprises us, however, by his ambition and immaculateness. But such a man or woman must always combine decided mental tendencies with his alimentativeness. Enjoys doing favors. The habits which endear the fat person to everyone and make us forget his faults are his never-failing hospitality, kindness when you are in trouble, his calming air of contentment, his tact, good nature, and the real pleasure he seems to experience when doing you a favor. His worst faults wreck upon him far greater penalties than fall upon those who associate with him, something that cannot be said for the faults of some other types. Likes Melody Simple, natural music is a favorite with fat people. Love songs, rollicking tunes, and those full of melody are most popular with him. An easy-to-learn, easy-to-sing song is one a fat man chooses when he names the next selection. They like ragtime, jazz, and music with a swing to it. Music the world over is most popular with fat races. The world's greatest singers and most of its famous musicians have been fat, or at least decidedly plump. Goes to the cabaret. The fat person will wiggle his toes, tap his fingers, swing his fork, and nod his head by the hour with a rumbling jazz orchestra. When the alimentative is combined with some other type, 
he will also enjoy other kinds of music, but the pure alimentive cares most for the primal tunes and melodies. Likes a girly show. A pretty girl show makes a hit with fat women as well as with fat men. Drop into the passing show and note how many fat people are in the audience. Drop into a theater the next night where a tragedy is being enacted and see how few fat ones are there. The one made sport of. Fat people enjoy helping out the players if the opportunity offers. All show people know this. When one of those tricks is to be played from the footlights upon a member of the audience, the girl who does it is always careful to select that circular gentleman down front. Let her try to mix up confetti or a toy balloon with a tall skinny man, and the police would get a hurry call. When we describe the bony type, you will note how very different he is from our friend the fat man. A movie fan the Fat Man's Theater would be a more fitting name for the movie houses of the country. Not that the Fat Man is the only type patronizing the cinema. The movies cover in one evening so many different kinds of human interest, news, cartoons, features, and comedy that every type finds upon the screen something to interest him. But if you will do what we have done, stand at the doorway of the leading movie theaters of your city any evening, and keep a record of the types that enter, you will find the plump are as numerous as all the others combined. Easy Entertainment The reason for this is plain to all who are acquainted with human analysis. The fat man wants everything the easiest possible way, and the movie fulfills this requirement more fully than any other theatrical entertainment. He can drop in when he feels like it, and there is no waiting for the show to start, for one thing. This is a decided advantage to him, for fat people do not like to depend upon themselves for entertainment. The Babies of the Race The first stage in biological evolution was the stage in which the alimentary apparatus was developed. To assimilate nutriment was the first function of all life, and is so still since it is the principal requirement for self-preservation. Being the first and most elemental of our five physiological systems, the alimentive, when it overtops the others, produces a more elemental, infantile nature. The pure alimentive has rightly been called, quote, the baby of the race, end quote. This accounts for many of the characteristics of the extremely fat person, including the fact that it is difficult for him to amuse himself. He, of all types, likes most to be amused, and very simple toys and activities are sufficient to do it. Loves the Circus A serious drama or problem play usually bores him, but he seldom misses a circus. The fat person expresses his immaturity also in that he likes to be petted, made over, and looked after. Like the infant, he demands food first. Almost the only time a fat man loses his temper is when he has been deprived of his food. The next demand on his list is sleep, another characteristic of the immature. Give a fat man three squares a day and plenty of sleep and a comfortable bed, and he will walk off with the prize for good humor 365 days in the year. Next to sleep, he demands warm clothing in winter, and steam heat when the wintry winds blow. Fat People at the Beach If it were not for the exertion required in getting to and from the beaches, dressing and undressing, and the momentary coldness of the water, many more alimentives would go to the beaches in summer than do. Not Strenuous Anything to be popular with the alimentive must be easy to get, easy to do, easy to get away from, easy to drop in if he feels like it, anything requiring the expenditure of great energy, even though it promises pleasure when achieved, is usually passed over by the fat people. The art of getting out of it. Let George do it, is another bit of slang invented by this type. He seldom does anything he really hates to do. 
He is so likable, he either induces you to let him out of it, or gets somebody to do it for him. He just naturally avoids everything that is intense, difficult, or strenuous. The Peaceable Type If an unpleasant situation of a personal or social nature arises, a quarrel, a misunderstanding, or any kind of disagreement, the fat man will try to get himself out of it without a discussion except when they have square faces, in which case they are not pure alimentives. Extremely fat people do not mix up in their neighborhood, family, church, club, or political quarrels. It is too much trouble for one thing, and for another it is opposed to his peaceable, untensed nature. Avoids expensive quarrels. The fat man has his eye on personal advantages and promotions, and he knows that quarrels are expensive, not alone in the chances they lose him, but in nerve force and peace of mind. The fat man knows instinctively that peace times are the most profitable times, and though he is not for peace at any price, so far as the country is concerned, he certainly is much inclined that way where he is personally concerned. You will be amused to notice how this peace-loving quality increases as one's weight increases. The more fat any individual is, the more he is inclined to get what he wants without hostility. The Real Thing The favorite good time of an alimentive is one where there are plenty of refreshments. A dinner invitation always makes a hit with him, but beware that you do not lure a fat person into your home and give him a tea with lemon wisp where he expected a full meal. Always ready for food. Substantial viands can be served to him any hour of the day or night with the certainty of pleasing him. He loves a banquet, provided he is not expected to make a speech. The fat man has a harder time than any other listening to long speeches. The fashion of trying to mix the two most opposite extremes, food and ideas, and expecting them to go down, was due to our misunderstanding of the real nature of human beings. It is rapidly going out, as must every fashion which fails to take the human instincts into account. Avoids Sports no prizes lure a fat man into strenuous physical exercise or violent sports, although we have witnessed numerous state, national, and international tennis, polo, rowing, sprinting, hurdling, and swimming contestants, we have not seen one player who was fat enough to be included in the pure alimentive type. The grandstands, bleachers, and touring cars at these contests contain a generous number of fat people, but their conversation indicated that they were present more from personal interest in some contestant than in the game itself. The nearest a fat man usually comes to taking strenuous exercise is to drive in an open car. The more easeful that car, the better he likes it. He avoids long walks as he would the plague, and catches a street car for a two-block trip. The Personal Element Due to his immaturity, the fat person gives little thought to anything save those things which affect him personally. The calm exterior, unruffled countenance, and air of deliberation he sometimes wears, and which have occasionally passed for judicial qualities, are largely the results of the fact that the alimentive refuses to get stirred up over anything that does not concern him personally. This personal element will be found to dominate the activities, conversation, and interests of the alimentive. For him to like a thing or buy a thing, it must come pretty near being something he can eat, wear, live in, or otherwise personally enjoy. He confines himself to the concrete and tangible. But most of all, he confines himself to things out of which he gets something for himself. Reading the fat man is no reader, but when he does read, it is nearly always something funny, simple, or sentimental. In newspapers, he reads the funnies. Magazine stories, if short and full of sentiment, attract him. 
He seldom reads an editorial and is not a bookworm. The newspaper furnishes practically all of the fat man's reading. He seldom owns a library unless he is very rich, and then it is usually for show. Avoids bookstores. In making the investigations for this course, we interviewed many clerks in the bookstores of leading cities throughout the United States. Without exception, they stated that few extremely fat people patronize them. Quote, I have been in this store 17 years, and I have never sold a book to a 250-pounder, one dealer told us. All this is due to the fact with which we started this chapter that the fat man is built around his stomach, and stomachs do not read. Naturally realistic. The fat man has the child's natural innocence and ignorance of subtle and elusive things. He has the same interest in things and people as does the child, the child's indifference to books, lectures, schools, and everything abstract. Physical Assets I believe I could digest nails, exclaimed a fat friend of ours recently. This perfect nutritive system constitutes the greatest physical superiority of the alimentive. So highly developed is his whole stomach department that everything agrees with him, and everything tends to make him fat. As Irvin Cobb recently said, quote, It isn't true that one can't have his cake and eat it too. For the fat man eats his and keeps it all. Physical Liabilities A tendency to overeat results naturally from the highly developed eating and digestive system of this type, but this in turn overtaxes all the vital organs, as stated before. Also, the fat man's aversion to exercise reduces his physical efficiency. The pure alimentive and the alimentively inclined should learn their normal weight and then keep within it if they desire long lives. Social Assets Sweetness of disposition is one of the most valuable of all human characteristics. Fat people possess it more often and more unchangingly than any other type. Other social assets of this type are amiableness, affability, hospitality, and approachableness. Social Liabilities Gaining his ends by flattery, cajolery, and various more or less innocent little deceptions are the only social handicaps of this type. Emotional Assets His unfailing optimism is the most marked emotional quality of this type. Nothing can be so dark that the fat person doesn't find a silver edge somewhere. So, in disaster, we always send for our fat friends. In the presence of an amply proportioned individual, everything looks brighter. Hope springs eternal in the human breasts, but springs are stronger in the plump folks than in the rest of us. Money spending is also a marked feature of the fat man. His emotions are outgoing, never ingrowing. A stingy fat man is unknown. Emotional Liabilities A tendency to become spoiled, to pout, and to take out his resentments in babyish ways are the emotional weaknesses of this type. These, as you will note, are the natural reactions of childhood, from which he never fully emerges. Business Assets The ability to make people like him is the greatest business and professional asset of this type, and one every other type might well emulate. The average-minded fat man near the door of a business establishment will make more customers in a month by his geniality, joviality, and sociableness than a dozen brilliant thinkers will in a year. Every business that deals directly with the public should have at least one fat person in it. Business Liabilities a habit of evading responsibility and of getting out from under constitutes the inclination most harmful to the business or professional ambitions of this type. Again, it is the child in him trying to escape the task set for it and at the same time to avoid punishment. 
domestic strength. Love of home is a distinguishing domestic trait of all fat people. The fat man's provision for his family is usually as complete as his circumstances will permit, and he often stretches it a point. As parents, fat men and women are almost too easygoing for their own future happiness, for they spoil their children, but they are more loved by their children than any other type. Being so nearly children themselves, they make equals of their children, enter into their games, and live their lives with them. Domestic Weakness Dependence on others, the tendency of allowing oneself to be supported by brothers or sisters or wife, is the chief domestic weakness of fat people. They should begin early in life to depend upon themselves and make it a practice to carry their share of family responsibilities. Should aim at Developing more of his mental powers with a view to using his head to lessen the manual work he so dislikes and cultivating an interest in the more mature side of the world in which he lives should be two of the aims of all extremely fat people. Should avoid letting down soft snaps and temptations to evade responsibility should be avoided by the fat. Elbert Herbert said, quote, Blessed is the man who is not looking for a soft snap, for he is the only one who shall find it. This explains why the fat man, unless brainy, seldom lands one. Strongest Points Optimism, hospitality, and harmony are the strongest points in the fat man's nature. Upon them many a man has built a successful life. Without them no individual of any type can hope to be happy. His popularity and all-rounded compatibility give the fat man advantages over other types which fairly compensate for the weak cogs in his machinery. Weakest Points Self-indulgence of all kinds, overeating, oversleeping, under-exercising, and the evasion of responsibilities are the weakest points of this type. Despite his many strong points, his life is often wrecked on these rocks. He so constantly tends to taking the easy way out. Day by day, he gives up chances for ultimate success for the babbles of immediate ease. He is the most likable of all the types, but his indolence sometimes strains even the love of his family to the breaking point. How to deal with this type socially? Feed him. Give him comfortable chairs, the largest you have and don't drag him into long discussions of any kind. This is the recipe for winning the fat man when you meet him socially. And whatever you do, don't tell him your troubles. The fat man hates trouble, smothers his own, and you only make him ill at ease when you regale him with yours. Don't walk him any more than is absolutely necessary. Let him go home early if he starts. He enjoys his sleep and doesn't like to have it interfered with. Make your conversation deal with concrete personal things and events. Stay away from highbrow subjects. The best places to eat and the best shows of the week are safe subjects to introduce when with very fat people. How to deal with this type in business? Don't give him hard manual tasks. If you want this kind of work done, get someone other than an extremely fat man to do it. If you hire a fat man, blame yourself for the result. Give your fat employee a chance to deal with people in a not-so-serious way, but hold him strictly to the keeping of his records, reports, and working hours. If this fat person is a dealer, a merchant, or a tradesman, keep him to his word. Start out by letting him know you expect the delivery of just what he promises. Don't let him jolly you into relinquishing what is rightly yours. And keep in mind always that the fat person is usually good at heart. Remember, the chief distinguishing marks of the alimentive in the order of their importance are rounded outlines, immature features, and dimpled hands. A person who has these is largely of the alimentive type, no matter 
what other types may be included in his makeup. End of part two of chapter one.